So welcome to American People Presents Free Friday Webinars. You can invite your friends. It's every Friday at 4 p.m. EST and 9 p.m. GMT. I'm currently in Germany, but last week I was in the UK. So I'll be joining you from different places. Soon I should be joining you from Turkey, from Istanbul. So that should be pretty cool. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about puppets for teaching young learners. Now, I put in a special link where you can get all the recordings in case you miss them, and it's tinyurl.com ELT webinars. So let me go ahead and uh, get that for you. And these are all the recordings, so you can see all the ones you may have missed, which I believe there's at least 12 of them. So that should be really helpful and useful. And they're only 30 minutes, so they're not that long. Uh, but this is the other address. This is the address that it will go to. The other is just the text. So I believe that puppets are actually good for um, young learners up to at least around 12. But you can also use them with uh, a little bit older adolescents. And I'll tell you how to do that in a little bit. Um, right now, I just want to tell you how to go ahead and use them with young learners. My experience has been with two-year-olds to ten-year-olds teaching them English. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. These are two fantastic puppets um, that I saw in Berlin. Um, and they make some fantastic puppets in Berlin. And I think one of the most important reasons to use puppets it's because kids, especially really young kids, are very shy, especially when it comes to speaking another language. But also they're just very shy in general when speaking um, to other kids. They, and this is their development year. So this is a really important time for us to teach them how to interact with the kids around them and learn social skills. So yes, some, some children have a personality of being shy, but puppets can really ease this this anxiety and stress for some of the shyest kids speaking up. And at this point in time in their development, it's really important that we help them have the courage to do this. Um, puppets aren't always, I found, likable. The kids aren't going to right away jump up and say, ooh, I love this puppet. So you have to ease them into the situation and you have to help them develop a relationship with the puppet in a way. <laughs> um, I've noticed that sometimes, you know, things that I might think are really cool are not so cool <laughs> to kids. And when that kid does not like that puppet, it's very difficult to get them to like the puppet. So it's not always roses, but um, I have found some different ways to make the puppets more enjoyable. I think kids, in my experience, tend to like animals. Um, and, and puppets like that better than they t tend to like um, kid puppets or other puppets like that. They tend to like ones that speak, <laughs> that they can play around with and that speak, and that are pretty easy to use. Now, these puppets are fantastic, but one of the things about these puppets is that um, they're, they're not easy for little kids to use. Now, if the kids can play with them and they can get a hold of them, and they can make the puppet talk, then that's one way to help them build a relationship with the puppet and to like the puppet. Um, so there are different ways you can ease them into the puppet. One of them is by playing games with the puppet. So for example, the way I got my puppets, my mother um, gave me a whole bunch for free, which I thought was really cool. And um, so I wanted to go ahead and use the free one, but you know, uh, what I did was, so I have all this bag of the free puppets, and what I did is I passed them around to the kids, and I said, choose one, choose one that you like, and then name the puppet. So they got to name the puppet, and then I asked them questions. Now this is with four to six year olds, um, like, what is your name? <laughs> and they made the puppet talk, they were supposed to make puppet talk. Now, I went ahead and I made the puppet talk too. <laughs> so this is uh, what well, I called him a dinosaur, <laughs> but he could also be a dragon. Uh, he probably is a dragon, so sometimes he's a dragon, sometimes he's a dinosaur. <laughs> uh, 
And so we played a game, and one of the games we played with um, Mr. Draco the Dragon was that Mr. Draco the Dragon asked the kids, how are you, um, the kids have to ask Mr. Uh, um, ask Draco, um, how are you, Mr. Draco? And so they, they line up on a wall, and then their goal is to run to the other side of the wall without Mr. Draco catching them. Now, the reason I use Mr. Draco, and there's another one, Mr. Croc, but I can't find Mr. Croc right now, because the kids love to be eaten by these. <laughs> so you can kind of tell how the story is going. So when they ask, Mr. Draco, Mr. Draco, how are you? Then he says, I'm sad. Ooh, I'm sad. And then he, he has to say he's hungry. And when he says he's hungry, so they ask again until he says he's hungry. When he says he's hungry, then he chases after them and he bites them. But this is great for teaching language such as feelings, emotions, and it gets the kids talking and chanting. So I think this is one way you can use puppets, especially with English language learners, to push them to speak English and use certain structures and um, certain grammar phrases um, by playing games with the puppet. And you can play this with any kind of puppet. You can do this with a bear. So, but it also, when you play games with the puppet, then that helps develop a relationship with the puppet. <laughs> yes, exactly. And they all chant together. And Mr. Draco won't say anything unless they all ch chant together and ask, how are you? Every single one of them has to. And he can say he's sad. Or... So <laughs> um, the other great thing about puppets is um, sometimes the kids might do mean things to the puppets and stuff like that. So, but you can have the puppets make emotions. And then, you know, if the kids try to do anything mean to the puppet, then you say, oh, I'm so sad. Why are you doing this to me? And then the other kids laugh. So um, you can teach a lot about social skills and how to act and how to treat others properly with the puppet. So I think these are very important things. Some things you can do with the puppet, some lesson ideas, are review favorite stories. Uh, where do you think the character on the right comes from? What favorite, what famous author or what famous story that you can use with kids? Anybody recognize? This is one of my favorite authors to use with my young learners, and it's so easy to find templates um, to make puppets, so the kids can make puppets of each of the characters. Yes, yes, she knows the story, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. <laughs> and for this story, you learn the days of the week, you learn about food, so there's so many things you can do with it. Um, puppets are fantastic for teaching stories, for reviewing the sequencing of stories. Um, <laughs> Eric Carl, he's fantastic. I mean, there's so many things that you can do with puppets. Um, and stories. You can have the kids create their own version of the story. You can have the kids um, say certain lines from the stories. Each one of them can be a character in the story. So it's one of the great ways to review vocabulary, structures, and things like that for the stories. And it's a great way for the kids to remember and interact with the story. Yes, exactly, for Victor, for developing uh, predicting. Puppets are fantastic for teaching, for introducing different cultures. I am so fascinated by, I've been to 16 different countries, and every time I visit a country, I see their street performers. And also I go to the shops and the kids' shops, and I look at the puppets, and I try to sometimes, you know, get the different puppets if it's reasonable. And they are in so many different types of um styles and costumes and dress. So for kids, bringing in different types of puppets from all over the world is a great way to introduce them to different cultures, the dress of it. And the great thing is if you're okay with the, with the child being responsible enough to take care of the puppet, um, to have the, pu the child actually
actually take one of the puppets from the and then you can have that child speak the way they think that that culture would speak and then you can start to figure out things of what kids know about other cultures um, you can also you know get them to learn about different cultures this way you can show them maybe like a little video and then they can go back and they can use the puppet and they can make the puppet do the same things they saw in the video so i think it's a great way to to teach cultures, which is very difficult to teach young learners. Um, this could be done before maybe Skype, and then they can show this, like maybe if they're Skyping with students in another country, let's say it's the U.S. and Peru. So think about the different puppets that might be in Peru and the different makers of them. And then they can share, um, look, this is the puppet that we saw from Peru, and they can exchange um, culture, cultural puppets and things like that. Yes, exactly. Definitely makes uh, grammar more <laughs> more enjoyable. I guess. <laughs> Another thing I love to do, and this is one of my favorite activities, and unfortunately I don't have them around, but have a puppet that is your mascot. So once the kids get attached to one of the puppets, then this becomes your new mascot. So this is Teddy Bear's sister. But Teddy Bear looks a lot like his sister here, um, and I forgot what, what they named her. <laughs> but this is Teddy Bear's sister, and Teddy Bear is our mascot, okay? And he has a little dress, and he has a little hat. And the good thing about a mascot is I no longer have to be the bad guy with the mascot. Now if a kid does something that I don't think is, is appropriate behavior, then I just say, mm. Teddy bear is sad, or Teddy bear will say, please don't do that. <laughs> I'm very shy about doing my voices there. Um, but Teddy bear becomes an icon in the class, and the students get to listen to Teddy bear, and, and they get to repeat things to Teddy bear, and every morning when the kids come to the class, Teddy bear asks them, will ask them a question, and it'll be something related to the lesson. So, for example, if we're learning about animals, then Teddy Bear will say something like, Hello, um, what's your favorite animal? And then each kid will go and, and they, will, they will go ahead and they'll answer the question. It's a ritual that I have with the bear. Now, one of the things that I do, uh, because I love to introduce technology, is I digitalize my mascot. You can digitalize your mascot with Voki. They have several different animals. Um, so then the, the kids go to my wiki. This is my wiki, English story time. Um, and I'll go ahead and, and put the wiki in there so you can see the wiki address. How I use um, different types of leave the message for them on the wiki. So the kids are very used to going to the wiki and visiting and seeing what the new message that Teddy Bear is going to have. I'm going to go ahead and play with you um, what this looks like. Voki is a free service. It's Voki.com and they recently took the ads off. You have a choice of different animals. You have a choice of different accents. Can everybody see the video here? Yes? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and play it. It's really fast. It's six seconds, so just uh, be prepared to listen. Hello, kids. I'm Billy Bear. How are you today? Are you ready to learn? So that, did everyone hear the, um, did everybody hear Teddy Bear there? <laughs> And the reason why that I, you can use your own voice actually, but the reason why with young learners of English that I use this voice was because you, you have a variety, you have like 10 different voices. You can have it from Australia, the UK, from India, so you have different accents that they can listen to as well. But the reason why I did it this way was because um, I had from the adult students, I used Voki with my adult students, and one of the things they said was, they said that they, they weren't able to understand my, my, my voice of teddy bear on the computer. So I went ahead and decided to just use the computer. <laughs> so they 
they could understand it. <laughs> but that's one way to have the students interact with the mascot as well. Put it on your website. And it's embeddable and it's free, so you can do that. When you think about puppets, not only think about, you know, having the kids play with the different puppets, but puppets can play with props now. Um, they can sing, they can dance, they can play the drums. There are so many things that I pick up from watching street performers that I say, my kids can do that. They can build a trumpet or a drum or something and have and sing along with the puppet, make the puppet sing and play the drum. And kids really love to test different things, you know, expand their minds, see what they're able to do. Great way to introduce different topics like, uh, for example, if, if you want to introduce um, instruments and, and teach them the language of instruments, or maybe uh, have them recite a song. A perfect one that you can do with puppets is while the kids are standing around in a circle, then you can have them do the hokey pokey. And instead of them just doing the hokey pokey, they can have their marionette. This is a special kind of puppet called a marionette. And um, the marionette can go ahead and do the hokey pokey for them, followed by the string. Now, it's expensive to buy puppets. <laughs> I understand this. So, one of the best things you can do is encourage the students to create their own. You can find templates online for practically any story. So if you Google, for example, Eric Carlisle or the Hungry um, Caterpillar and puppets, then you, you'll, find, you'll find different character puppets and templates and things you can print off for free that the kids can make. Pretty much any story that's popular out there. I do it for Little Red Riding Hood. I do it for, um, so you don't even have to take the time to make them. Now you can always make them. That's always a great idea. Um, but nowadays, if you go to craft stores, you can find templates for all sorts of types of puppets. You can make finger puppets. Uh, finger puppets are fantastic. And one of the things, here's from Uncle Tom's Cabin. Now, Uncle Tom's Cabin is, is quite heavy as far as what you're teaching the kids uh, because you know it's about slavery and that's a very difficult issue so puppets are really great ways of broaching different very difficult topics that you might teach kids here you can see uh, one of the kids is lesson and the kid um, made these different finger puppets and the finger puppets go you know in your and they went ahead and they, um, they, they described what each of them said. So these are the different characters. Have each of the kids make their own. Now, I have them make it for things such as, you can print out templates of finger puppets as well for finger chants. For example, I do it for uh, the Incy Wincy Spider. So they have little finger puppets for that. Um, any of the finger chants. Okay, Lisa, the five little monkeys. Yeah, exactly. One of the things that I have them do, and I didn't put up this slide, I should have, is for the finger plates, okay, so if you take a picture of their finger puppets, then you can make their finger puppets talk. And one way you do this is by using a service called Babblerize. So let me go ahead and uh, type Babblerize, uh, the URL, and this is another free um, this is another free one, so let me go ahead and and I'll show you how I use it. I'm going to have to screen share it. So, okay, so that's the web URL, babblerize.com. And let me go ahead and screen share. My screen in just a sec. So this is what Babblerize looks like. Can everybody see that? <laughs> this is my finger plate. I will show you. Now this is just a drawing. I didn't put, this, these aren't the finger puppets, but you can do the same thing. You can take a picture of the finger.
using your puppet, and then you can make them talk. So this is what the blabber live looks like. Okay, so hopefully you were able to see that. Let me stop sharing now. Okay, so was everyone able to see that? So, that's a Babarai. Yes, okay. So, that's a Babarai stack. So, you just take a picture. But even better than having the kids, um, well, in addition to having them make it, it's, it's really great to have the students make a story out of it. So if they went through the effort of making their puppets, uh, then they should get together as a class and then you can make a story out of it. So you, depending on the language level of the kids, you may want to give them scripts. If they can handle it, then, and especially if they're older kids, then have them make the script themselves if they can produce the language. They can do this in groups, they can do this in pairs, they can do this as a class. And then they make the different props and then have them make the stage and throw a show. <laughs> uh, you can invite the parents. For older students, so if you do have, for example, the older ones, maybe 13, 12, 13, 14, and if their language is pretty good, then one thing you can do is you can have them make a story for little kids. I've done this before with storybooks. And then they throw a show for the little kids class. So if you can't get it for the parents, then maybe you can work with the younger kids class. And this really motivates the older kids. The older kids really enjoy doing this. Um, you can make it a replica of their favorite shows as well. But if you can't throw a show, um, and even if you can, one of the best things you can do is to film the puppet show. So, and then put it online, put it in a wiki or something, and then have others um, comment on it, and, and you can show classes, and the students will love this. And this is really great for the parents, because then you show the parents that the students are not only just making the characters and things like that, but the students are actually using their English they learn and they're putting it in practice speech. So I think, you know, doing this is really, really fantastic. Um, it shows what a great job you're doing. <laughs> and one of the things, when you're having the students make puppets, um, some of the teachers that I train say, well, that's not a good idea because the kids aren't using proper language. Well, if you're facilitating, if you get the kids into groups, having them, they're making props and stuff, you go around and then you ask them things um, for example, okay, so when they're making their characters, and you can do this different ways. You can have where you already have characters that they make, or one of my favorite things to do is to put a whole list of um, on a table. I have the kids come, and they get recycled material, things from their household that they're going to throw anyway, maybe cardings and things like that. They bring it on the table, and then they can make their puppet from that, and they can make any puppet they want anything they want, and then, you know, there's glue, and then I go around while they're making the puppet, and I ask them questions uh, related to character, so, oh, what is the color of your puppet's hair, what is, your, what is his or her name, is it a boy or a girl, and this is really easy language that you're practicing with the student, so even if the student is making something, have them practice in English for it. Hi, Marissa. <laughs> um, okay, so now I would like to ask you, what activities do you do with puppets? There are many, many more that you can do. So not only throwing shows, but you can have, I saw this one puppet show, and it's fantastic, and it gave me a great idea. I was recently in Pop, um, and they do these 3D shows where the puppets are in 
Well, they're not thriving, they're glow in the dark. And the puppets are in glow in the dark and they come out and they glow and it's really cool. To the beetles and the yellow submarine. You can have the kids maybe have their favorite band, their favorite singer, make a puppet of it, and then sing the puppet sings the song. Um, they could have like a puppet karaoke, <laughs> especially older. Um, it comes out pretty nice, and it's a great way to get them. Um, okay, so what are some of the some of the activities that you can think of that you do with puppets? Everyone has a mic, so if you have an idea, then all you have to do is um, is go ahead and use the microphone and speak. <laughs> Um, I think it depends with 10 and 11 year olds. If you have them created for um, for young learners, uh, I mean for the younger classes, then I think it'll work. Especially if they get to, oh, okay, that's fantastic, Victor. Okay, so Victor, you wouldn't by a chance have a microphone. <laughs> that's a great idea, introduce yourself. It, 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 the 10 to 11 year olds, the trick is they want to, they do want to use puppets. The thing is they think it's not cool in front of their friends. So if you give them a purpose and you tell them it's for the young kids and they're making a place, then they'll get to use it and then they'll start saying, okay, well, now I can have fun with the puppet because it's, Same thing with adults. Um, adults can use them to tell stories to their children, or they can, that way they can have a story time with their children. Oh, that's a great idea, yeah. Um, use them in reported speech to report what others say or what other characters in a story say. Yes, very good. Um, this works really good with um, different stories as well. One of the reasons why I like using the bear puppet is because most stories have bears in them. Um, there's so many bear stories out there, so I don't have to buy uh, characters, uh, the same character for each story. The bear will pretty much be for every story out there. Um, but, but one of the things that you can do is you can have the kids, if, if they have um, their puppet and there are certain repetitive lines from characters in the puppet, for example, um, then you can have them retell the story like that. For example, the Gruffalo. Gruffalo is a great one. You can have a snake. You can have the Gruffalo. You can have the little, um, the little mouse. You can have the owl. And in each of them, pretty much repeats the same line. So that's, so you can have it, them do it that way as well. Okay. And is it uh, Angelus? Angelus, how did you use the, um, the puppets with teenagers? That's, that's interesting. I have seen some really cool puppets that are are really elaborate, like Circus de Lay, uh puppets that were cool, I think, enough for the kids to use, uh, I mean, for teenagers to use. Uh, practicing dialogues with Lolo, oh, that's really, that's fantastic. And actually, okay, so this is my information. Um, in case you need anything. Um, you can practice dialogues. Yeah, definitely. Um, asking them questions. I think the glow-in-the-dark puppets would really work for teenagers, um, especially if they're life-size. The puppets they used for the yellow submarine were life-size. And actually, let me see if I can find it, because this would be really good to use with adults and for um 
he could do this and this would be really fantastic. So I'm going to see if I can find what this kind of looks like. It's called a black light theater. But if you can do the black light theater, then um, you could do this. I think the teenagers would really into doing something like this. And they can do they can do stories this way and other things like that. Um, I'll have to find that later. But this is my information in case you need anything. Um, you can go to the tiny URL and then you can go ahead and uh, see the previous webinars that have been presented here. Oh, thank you, Lisa, for, for sharing that. And next week, our topic will be um, We're here every Friday at 4 p.m. EST and at 9 p.m. GMT. So the next presentation will be about RCAP and we will talk about board games for teens. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see different ways that you can teach English. Whose birthday is it? I missed something in the chat. <laughs> and if you want a certificate of attendance, I know I've been behind, but I am going to do it this weekend. You can email me at Shelly Terrell, and please email me and let me know which. Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Hola? Hola? Yeah. Mm. Hello. Some problems. Can you hear me? Yeah? Okay. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello? Okay. At first, uh, congratulations, Shelly, for the great work you are doing. Okay. Uh, in order to share your knowledge, uh, we are learning a lot with you. Thank you very much for that. About the topic, all right, about the topic teaching a, a language or teaching English using Muppets. Yeah, uh, mainly um, I suggest my teacher education students to use uh, Muppets in order to uh, start beginning of a lesson mainly. Yes, in order to um, put the students in context, all right, and to motivate or or uh, get the students engaged in the in the topic. Mm, mainly is, is that what I what I uh, practice using Muppets. I am a bit uh, 
uh, a bit um, shy in 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 acting in performing as an actor. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Victor, for speaking. That, that was fantastic because I didn't say that. You're right, that teaching context, when they're setting up the scene, um, when they do the different talks and things like that and the situations, and I think it was Angelus who was talking about dialogue, maybe role play. Yeah, it definitely puts the language in a context. So, yes, that's fantastic. Thank you. And it definitely is motivating.